So, are the new BP weapons any good? How's it going everyone? This is K, and with 4.0 being out, there are 5 new weapons we can choose. Of course, it's from the Battle Pass, which costs money, but hey, starve for a day for some digital goods. Sounds about right for us gacha gamers. And if you're someone who doesn't pull on the weapons banner often, these BP weapons can be a lifesaver. But how are they? Well, some are pretty good, while others aren't the best. Keep in mind, there's a high possibility that these weapons are meant to synergize with future characters and not necessarily for current ones. So some may sound bad on paper, but may be amazing in the future. Let's start with the sword. Wolfang is pretty darn good. Damage buff for E skill and burst. On top of that, it gives a crit rate boost to the unit's skill or burst whenever those attacks hit an enemy. The crit rate buff is counted separately with max of 4 stats lasting 10 seconds. Obviously, the higher the R level, the higher the buff. This is amazing for characters characters with consistent E skill or burst. One character that highly benefits from this sword will be Alhatham since majority of his personal damage comes from his skill and it's consistent enough to gain the crit rate buff. Characters like Xing Chou or Kaya who relies on burst can also benefit. Let's compare it to the Black Sword real quick. Both offer the same stats of 510 attack and 27.6 crit rate. I actually like that the Wolf Fang doesn't replace or gets overshadowed by this sword. Black Sword is perfect for on-field normal attackers like a Yato or Kuching, while Wolf Fang can be great for sub DPS units. I would highly recommend the Wolf Fang Sword among the other weapons. It's simple, highly effective, and pretty future-proof as well since there's always going to be characters that specializes in their skill or burst. Now for the Claymore, there are some requirements. Your character needs to be inflicted by elements. Pyro grants an attack buff, while Hydro, Cryo, Electro, and Dendro gives an elemental damage buff. Both effects can be triggered once every 12 seconds, and it does have a 100% uptime, so as long as you reapply the element. It's not too hard to inflict an element on yourself, but this will require certain characters on your team that can either inflict their own elements like Beidou, or have supports that can do so like Bennett. Even elemental enemies can hit you, and you still gain the buff. Thankfully, the elemental infliction doesn't have to remain, just get hit once, and it'll trigger the buff. Problem is that after 15 seconds, you'll have to trigger the elemental affliction again, so there's some management involved, which a lot of players may not be a fan of. And as opposed to the Serpent Spine, where you'll gain the damage buff stacks by remaining on the field, only management you need is to not get hit, which can be easily done with a shield. In terms of stats, it has 565 attack, that's pretty darn high, but crit rate is only 18.4%. Serpent Spine, on the other hand, is 510 attack and 27.6% crit rate. I would skip out on this new claymore, but again, future characters may synergize with this. But for now, go with the Serpent Spine for your claymore DPS characters. Moving on, we have another pretty darn good weapon, high EM buff with crit rate stats. That's like every reaction focused character's dream. Only problem is that you need three different elements in the team, which puts minor restrictions on team building. But for most reaction damage builds, you won't run mono teams or rarely have 2 2. A lot of characters will benefit from this weapon an EM Raiden build, Shangling, Rosaria Melt, Sinu. At higher refinements, you can reach up to 240 EM at R5, which is like almost an extra EM artifact and a half. Not to mention, you get 27.6 crit rate stats with 510 attack stats. Easy to meet the requirements for the buff, extremely helpful especially with Genshin's major focus on reactions, one of the best BP weapons out there, hands down. I would recommend the ballot over the deathmatch in most cases, but if you are focused on less reactions, then the deathmatch is a solid stat stick for pull arms. For the catalyst, Sacrificial Jade is very, very restrictive. It's meant for off-field characters that scales with the HP or helps with triggering reactions thanks to the EM buff. Baiju is a prime candidate for this, but most on-field attackers won't really benefit. Miko can benefit from the EM buff, but there are just better 4-star catalysts for sub-DPSs. Now at R5, it gives an insane 64% max HP boost and 80 EM, and this will be perfect for an EM Kokumi build, if of course you ignore the crit rate substat since, you know, the girl can't crit. Kokumi is normally reserved towards the end of the rotation after throwing out her skill. 5 seconds and she'll receive the buff, and it'll take 10 seconds before the buff is removed when she's on the field. It so happens her burst lasts 10 seconds, giving you more than enough time to trigger her reactions and deal tons of damage, then 
switch her out, and wait 5 seconds for the buff. The effects for this catalyst is really really strong, but it's reserved for those who scale with HP and EM, and usually aren't for characters that must remain on the field frequently. I feel like future characters will benefit from this a lot, but for now, the selection of units is relatively low for this weapon. Lastly is the Blazing Sunbow. It's meant strictly for charge shot DPS units, so you have your Ganyus, your Tignaries, Amber, and recently, Linny. 565 attack and 18.4% crit rate, as opposed to 510 attack and 27.6% crit rate for the very Descent Bow. When a charge shot hits, a Sunfire Arrow will then hit the target and debuff them for 10 seconds. The debuff enemy will take 28 to 56% more charge shot damage, depending on the refinement level. Problem is, the Sunfire Arrow that causes the debuff can be triggered once every 10 seconds, so this bow is meant for single target battles. Now, it can lead to a lot of damage, but fighting multiple enemies and in worst case scenarios, fighting multiple bosses at once, the bow's effect can be slow. Bows has always been a bit on the weaker side for the battle passes. Very Descent is nice to group small enemies together and deal a little damage. Overall though, there's just other 4 star bows you can use instead of spending money on these. But to summarize, the Wolfang and Ballot are the best. Is it worth spending money and in most cases 50 bucks to max refine one weapon? I don't think so, but for some extra currency and materials you get along with the battle pass, then to me, I think it's worth spending 10 bucks. Me personally, I really want the Wolfang for my Al Haytham. That black sword I have has been the only weapon I use, so getting a new offensive sword can be very refreshing. Well, there you have it. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for future Genshin Impact videos. Uh, comment down below to let me know if you like these new BP weapons. Again, I think they're pretty decent. Some are huge standouts like the sword and the spear or polearm for specific terms, right? Uh, so those two, I really do like and I would encourage you to get those if you already are spending money on the battle passes and you maybe max refined the other usual weapons. But there you have it, folks. Good luck on your pulls if you're pulling for Lenny or if you're saving for a future unit. Till next time.